for the unique brand of charismatic leadership that media likes to call the Miriam Magic. I'm so pleased to have the honor of introducing to you our Senator of the Republic of the Philippines, Dr. Miriam Defensor Santiago. Tandaan mo, tao ka. 
Kinika Zebra. <laughs> Internet is by definition 
hostile to any desire to control, direct, manage, or supervise whether the desire comes from the government or from other internet groups. Experience has shown us that attempts to control the internet will invariably fail. We should be instructed by the failed efforts of China to regulate political content, the failed efforts of America to regulate internet gambling, or the failed efforts of Australia to regulate certain speech. By its very nature, the internet will always resist such controls. Internet libel. In the United States, from which we inherited the common law system as part of our mixed law system, a mixture of the civil law and the common law, digital media law no longer imposes strict liability upon libel defendants. In the 1971 case of China Incorporated versus Pig, the U.S. Supreme Court created what it called, quote, a zone of protection, unquote, for errors of fact that occur in publication. In that case, the Supreme Court ruled that plaintiffs suing for defamation, or what we call libel, regarding a matter of public concern, must prove negligence or malice on the part of the defendant, as well as the falsity of the defendant's statements. Within this context, let us see very briefly how libel laws ap apply to traditional media defendants versus non-traditional or non-media defendants in a period in which our economy is producing digital media products. Our Supreme Court has upheld the constitutionality of the legal provision prohibiting and penalizing online libel. This Supreme Court ruling raises many questions. Here are some questions. Are bloggers and podcasters entitled to the same level of free speech protection in libel cases? In a libel case in the state of Georgia in America, the appellate court convicted of libel a blogger using a news format but with a clearly biased agenda. Next question. Should bloggers and podcasters bear the same type of liability as traditional media for defamatory statements? I have advocated that the criminalization of libel in the sense that libel should no longer be punished by imprisonment but simply by requiring the defendant to pay damages. The question is, how much in damages can be awarded to plaintiffs? In the 2009 case of Oryx Capital versus Super Futures Equities, the court in Texas awarded $2.5 million in compensatory damages and $10 million in punitive damages. I very humbly disagree with the ruling of our Supreme Court on digital libel because it might precipitate libel suits related to posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Craigslist. A tweet is limited to 140 ca characters, and you might think that it would be difficult to commit libel with this limitation. But in a court in the United Kingdom, the plaintiff won a libel case because a British politician posted a tweet. A safe harbor provision. Because of the dangers to free speech posed by the recent Supreme Court decision upholding online libel, I have filed a new bill in the Senate called Magna Carta for Internet Freedom, which was written by crowdsourcing on the internet. In the light of the recent Supreme Court decision, I highly recommend the Congress to protect online service providers from liability for the posts made by their users. This is called the, quote, safe harbor provision, unquote, under the U.S. Communications Decency Act. Under Section 230 of the American Law, operators of, quote, interactive computer services, unquote, are free from liability for the defamatory comments made by their users. Section 230 provides, quote, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be tried as a publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. However, we have to restudy the, quote, safe harbor provision, unquote, because it can be abused. The provision exempts the website from liability, while its operators shield posters, people who post, by means of coding that allows people to post anonymously. Thus, the courts might use the safe harbor provision 
to dismiss complaints for invasion of privacy, misappropriation of trade secrets, cyber stalking, and negligence. This is a very complicated because it is very new subject in law. Pay for stay in the Napoles case. Because of the prestige enjoyed by La Salle University, now covered by the main forms of media in Metro Manila. Please allow me to touch on the current controversy concerning the amount that the government is paying to provide safety and security to Janet Napoles. This personality apparently enjoys rock star status because of allegations that she committed the crime of plunder in the 10 billion peso for Paris time. Napoles has stubbornly insisted on the right to remain silent during Senate public hearings on the scandal. Since Napoles refuses to cooperate, it appears that there is no substantial reason for the government to pay so much money just for one individual while the government does not provide the same services for all other prisoners facing criminal charges and denied the right to bail. Apparently, I humbly propose that President Aquino should take public funds by allowing detention prisoners to pay for their stay. The first legal basis is the President's ordinance power under which he could issue a memorandum order concerning a particular office of the government. The second legal basis is the so-called President's residual powers as provided for by the Administrative Code. The president, the president has power to compel a detention prisoner. A detention prisoner is a prisoner who has been convicted, but because he's not allowed bail under the Constitution and under a law, he has to stay in jail while his trial is going on. He's called a detention prisoner. That is the status of Napoles. The president has the power to compel a detention prisoner to make a choice between ordinary stay in jail at government expense or stay in an enhanced facility at the prisoner's own expense. In the United States, this is called the Pay for Stay program. The American courts have upheld Pay for Stay programs in such states as Texas, California, New York, Illinois, Tennessee, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. In the United States, Pay for Stay programs have been questioned in court. The most famous of these American decisions is the 2000 case of Tillman v. Correctional Facility versus Correctional Facility, decided by the U.S. Court of Appeals. The American Appellate Court upheld the system of charging inmates for enhanced room and board under the following rulings in constitutional law. Bullet, pay for stay does not constitute cruel and unusual punishment which is prohibited by the Constitution so long as the inability to pay the fees did not affect the subject prisoner's access to needed services. Bullet, the program does not impose excessive fines which is prohibited in the U.S. Constitution since the fees charged to the prisoner were not fines but they were rehabilitative rather than punitive in nature. Bullet, there was no denial of due process because the American system provided a prisoner grievance procedure. Bullet. There is no violation of the Equal Protection Clause under the so-called rational basis review, where it is shown that there is a rational relationship between the end sought to be gained and the means employed. The landmark case of Tillman teaches us that there should be judicial deference to executive administrative practices. In other words, the judiciary should grant a wide latitude in applying the president's constitutional power to control the executive department. In fact, the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Tillman decision indicates that even if Tillman's constitutional rights have been violated, the court may still find that the violation was outweighed by the state's interest in quote, sparing the taxpayers the cost of imprisonment. Ang bigat ng demanda sa kanya, ayaw na magsalita. Pagkatapos ang laki-laki na ginagasas ng gobyero para lang sa kanya na hindi naman binibigay sa mga kabuka ng mga detention prisoners. <laughs> Philippine state in interest and insists the promotion of the truth about the pork barrel scandal. If Napoles is a person in interest, 
refuses to cooperate by providing information which he apparently possesses about the scam, there is no acceptable reason why the government should single her out for special treatment among the more than 70,000 detention prisoners in the country. In fact, the very discrimination in her favor is what constitutes a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, is apparently spending excessive public funds to detain a police as compared to an ordinary detention prisoner. Compare these two kinds of detainees in terms of their periodic expenses as follows. Napoles, daily, 5,000 pesos. Ordinary prisoner, 54 pesos. Napoles, monthly, 150,000 pesos. Ordinary prisoner, 1,600. Napoles, yearly, 1.8 million. Ordinary prisoner, 20,000. The PNP should immediately build in a police under a cost recovery program. If she wishes to avail of protection for her security and safety, then the obvious legal remedy for her to apply to the witness protection program administered by the Department of Justice. In the end, the Napoleon case constitutes one more example of the interaction of technology, business, and law in our network environment. It remains for lay LaSalle to ensure that at least in this case, justice is done. As you can see, I've only given you a bird's eye view of the problems that face our country and the world in which we live today. I would very much like to talk about the Ukraine problem in Russia or about the Malaysian Airlines problem in Southeast Asia. But most of all, I would like to talk about the womanizing of my fellow senators in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> However, you have no more time. This is for you to take up in your future. But as we struggle on, and sometimes we do not always prevail, as we struggle on, remember what a poet said. In the world's broad field of battle, in the big walk of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however pleasant. Let the dead past bear its dead. Act, act in the living present, heart within and God overhead. Thank you very much.